Why is lambda calculus called in this way? What does the lambda symbol in its name represent? In this video, we're going to answer specifically this question by explaining what the lambda symbols that you've probably commonly encountered in these expressions actually mean. Before we proceed, let's make a quick recap of the last video if you haven't seen it. In the last video, we talked about the intentional view and the extensional view of functions. The latter is concerned with the input-output behavior of a function by considering the sets associated to f called the domain and the codomain, whereas the former investigates how the function does such assignments, that is, with respect to which predefined process the function assigns inputs to determine outputs. In the last part of the video, we showed some expressions involving a lambda symbol. But what do these expressions mean? This is precisely the question we're going to answer in this video. Let us consider this expression right here. The above expression just denotes the function that assigns the input x to the output x plus 3. The symbol lambda denotes that the expression following will be a function. The symbol following lambda will be the variable of the function, that is, the varying value that will be taken as an input. This variable is a local variable of the lambda term, which will be also often called bound variable. The symbol with which we represent such a variable is completely arbitrary, and the choice of it does not affect the type of expression represented by the lambda term, as it simply plays the role of a label and nothing else. The expression following the dot, on the other hand, denotes the output of the function, in this case x plus 3. In classical mathematics, we could have defined this function with the label f of x, by writing it as f of x is equal to x plus 3. Such a definition, however, requires the use of a label, in this case f. In lambda calculus, on the other hand, thanks to the lambda notation, specifying a label is not necessary. This is why we will often call the functions in lambda calculus anonymous. This definition is particularly popular in programming contexts. Programming languages such as JavaScript, Golang or Python allow for the creation of anonymous functions, that is, unlabeled functions. The syntax for defining set type of functions, however, varies significantly from language to language. In Python, for example, the notation lambda is used in the following way, lambda x colon x plus 1. This is an example of a lambda function in Python corresponding to the function sending the input x to the output x plus 1. These anonymous functions in Python are often synonymously called lambda functions for this reason. This lambda notation is, by the way, influenced by lambda calculus. Another advantage that the lambda notation we use to express functions has is that other than being able to define functions anonymously, we're also able to specify at what input to evaluate them without incurring in verbose notation. Let us consider the following example. We define anonymously the function sending x to x plus 5, and then we take x equals 5. We can summarize the above notation with the following notation lambda x dot x plus 5 computed at 5, and this evaluates to 10. We can use the lambda formalism to define also functions of several variables as well. Let us suppose we want to express the function f function of x and y defined as x squared plus x times y plus y as a lambda term. We can represent it as follows. lambda y dot lambda x dot x squared plus xy plus y. Thus, we represented the multivariable function by splitting it into two one-variable functions. Let's say we want to compute f at the point x equals 1, y is equal 2. To do so, we compute first the innermost function at x equals 1, and then the outermost function at y is equal to 2, and the process will yield 5 in the end. As an exercise, try representing the multiple variable function defined by x1, x4, plus x3, x2, plus x3, x1, x4, minus 5 as a lambda term, and compute it in the point 0 0.5, 6, minus 7, minus 2. As mentioned in the last video, in untyped lambda calculus, we don't care about the types of inputs. We can take the inputs of our functions to be themselves functions. 
For example, we can represent the operation mapping a function f to its composition f composed f as lambda of f dot lambda of x f of f of x. This laxity with respect to the types of the inputs allows us to write expressions such as the following. We define f of x to be the identity function, that is f of x is equal to x. Then we can take f of itself, that is f of f, in the following way, and the result will be f itself. Such an expression would not be possible in ZFC mathematics, for the reasons we covered in the last video. With this said, we reached the point where our original questions was answered in a satisfactory enough manner. In the next video, we're going to continue our exploration of lambda calculus by starting to use the formalism of lambda expressions we just explained to realize Boolean values, integer values, and logical operators. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, I would be really thankful if you liked it and subscribed to help it get more visibility. With this said, I thank all of you for your attention.